I'm sorry you had to see those pants, too. <laughs> it's okay. Do any of the girls that you know, would they ever be considered, in, would they ever consider dating a guy wearing pants like that? No, no. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know what kind of a woman would want a dude wearing those kind of pants. But then again, I'm old school, but that's what it is. It would seem that it is a very small world. The things that go on and the people that we come across. The things that old Savage Studios had did when he was at Huntington Beach. And to this young lady right here that you see on the screen who he did it to. It would probably shock you to know that Leslie's my daughter. No, not really. But what if she was? Or what if she was your daughter? What if she was your little sister, your niece, somebody close to you, even your significant other? How would you feel if some stalker, weirdo, just came up out of nowhere, out of the blue, and just started totally disrespecting her? Your first reaction is always going to be like, what? And with that said right there, the man then proceeds to challenge everybody to a fight. Words are exchanged. Things happen. Before too long, the cops are called. Next thing you know, you're going to jail and you watch him walk away free as a bird. How would you feel? There's been a lot of speculation. There's been a lot of people standing up and sticking up for this clown. You already know he ain't going to get no love on this channel. And... When Leslie had approached me with Captain Napton, shout out to Captain Napton, they asked me if I could go ahead and give her an interview to show support, to hear her side of it, and to hopefully make all of you aware of what's really going on with this guy. And if you continue to support him after this, that says a lot about your character. So we're going to go ahead and welcome... Leslie to the show, and she's going to go ahead and tell you all about what went on. What's cracking, Leslie? Welcome to Hi, Prison JP. Break Raw. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leslie. So, okay. So we were walking back from the pier, and then I see this guy, and he, out of nowhere, randomly asked me, um, bitch, did you spit? And I say, what? And then um, he just um, starts acting very mean and he's just aggressive. And um, then um, he um, starts, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit nervous. Okay, take your time. Okay, so then um, he calls me a bitch and um, my friend is, my friend, my brother's friend is like, did you just call my sister a bitch? What's wrong with you? And he says, what's up? And he, he starts acting all tough and hard. And he um, hits, he ends up hitting my friend, my brother's friend. And then um, that's when everything starts escalating. But um, yeah, I'm just very scared, honestly. I don't, I didn't know what to expect from this guy. He came aggressive and he just called me a bitch, you know? Well, I don't think you really got too much to worry about this guy other than the fact that he might be, you know, with a pair of binoculars in the tree across from your house, peeping into your windows at night. He's the kind of guy that likes to wear a bathrobe with nothing on underneath running around the neighborhood flashing people. He's just a complete creep. Um, honestly, the way that I was hearing it is that, like, you, you guys were the aggressors. I thought maybe that, you know, I thought maybe you were pissed off that he stole your pants. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, they, people were saying that we were aggressors and people were saying that he was actually saying that we were from somewhere. We're not from somewhere. We're just some normal people that were trying to enjoy my birthday weekend, actually. We were enjoying my birthday weekend. He just comes out of nowhere and starts being an aggressive person, calling me a bitch and... You know, that's just very unfair. 
So he didn't steal your pants? <laughs> no. Because he looked like he was wearing pants that you could probably fit into snugly. Right, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about those pants, all right? You've seen the picture. Now, I don't know, like, I don't think I could take a guy seriously that's coming up to me wearing those pants. What do you think? I can't either. He looks like a clown to me, honestly. Yeah, there was some speculation that he might have, you know, didn't do his laundry that weekend and might have borrowed yo uh, Brittany's yoga pants, but we all know that Brittany's now with some other guy, which is probably the reason why he's mad at every female in the world because he just can't keep one. Yeah, he must hate his life now. Yeah, so so he, ca he comes up to you. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but did you, did you know that he was a seat sniffer? No, I did not. Do you know what a seat sniffer is? Um, no, I don't know what that is. All right. A seat sniffer is prison break raw terminology for a stalker. Oh. So did you, let me ask you this. Did you know that that was Savage Studios, Savage? I did Even not know Stalin? anything about this dude. No, I don't know who he was. I didn't even know what he did. I don't know nothing about him until after we got out of of jail, people were actually sending us, say, telling us we fought a YouTuber or something like that. And I was like, this guy's no YouTuber. He's a clown, just wants content. Content, yeah. So you didn't, you didn't know that he was this big, giant Jay-Z-like YouTube celebrity? That's, that's the way a lot of his friends, fellow YouTubers that are, that are uh, allies with him are trying to portray it, is that you guys were just knocking him because... He's a YouTuber. Yeah, we didn't know this dude at all. I don't. I didn't even know he existed. None of us knew he existed. And you said that he said that you guys were Southsiders, right? But yeah. you guys aren't. You guys aren't gang members at all. We are not. No, we are just some civilians that were trying to enjoy the beach. Yeah. So, is it is it possible that maybe? Because did he just like, was he just walking by you and passing or did he just yeah, walk we were, up to you? He, so, he, yeah, he walked, he walked up to me and he asked me, bitch, did you just spit? And I was like, I turned and I was like, wait, what? I was so confused because, first of all, I didn't spit. Second of all, I didn't even know who he was talking to because I, I didn't spit. I was like, what is this dude saying? Who is he talking to? And you said you were you were holding hands with uh with your girlfriend oh at the time, right? Correct, yes. Was it was it possible? I mean, could it is it at all possible that maybe he was trying to make like some kind of a maybe like a sexual pass or some kind of sexual humor with that? Cuz it yeah, just doesn't maybe... Go, Go ahead. ahead, sorry. Oh. I I said that it just it just kind of random and weird and odd. That somebody would yeah. just come up with you and ask, did you just spit? Yeah, it's just so weird. Yeah, it feels like, you know, he was trying to come up to, you know, get something out of me or something because I didn't spit. And, you know, he just came directly to me. And I don't know why I felt so weird. And, you know, I didn't feel comfortable. I was like, why is this dude coming up to me? Did he have his, did he have his shirt off like when he came up to you or did he take it off later? He actually had it off, I believe. Oh, no, actually, he took it off. Yeah, he took it off. Oh, he took it off? Yeah, after, yeah, he took it, he had took it off after. After the incident go, went down, after he started um, trying to, um, after he stalked my brother's friend, he took it off. So he just, he just initiated the attack. He just threw a punch and that's what started yes. the whole the whole thing plus not not the besides the fact that he asked you if you spit correct yeah did he at any time like was it i don't know was he smiling was did, did it look like he was joking was did he look mad i mean what was his what was his facial yeah. expression he was laughing and he was like uh, like, I'm sorry, I hit you. He even told me, I'm sorry, I hit you. Like, he was smiling and he was just like calling me a bitch. He was so aggressive.
Let's go back to those pants for a second. Um, so, I mean, do you think maybe that those pants might have been like cutting off the blood circulation to his brain or something? To because I got to tell you, like I seen the pictures of those pants, and I, I can I can almost see his internal organs. They were so tight. Yeah, they look like they even would fit me. I mean, it looked like they'd even be tight on you. That's that's the whole thing. So, yeah. I mean, is it possible that maybe those pants were, like, cutting off the blood to his brain? Maybe he was experiencing some form of intoxication that way, or do you believe that maybe yes, when he was he came intoxicated? To, yes, actually, when he came up to me, he smelled like very bad alcohol. He was strong. Did he smell like B.O.? Yes. Did he? Wait, body order? Yeah, did, did, he, did he smell like that he, he might have needed some right guard or something? Or was oh, yeah. it just alcohol? No, just alcohol. All right. So he, uh, he okay, so he must have used deodorant that day. All right, so um, when all that was going on, this other picture that I showed you, this jack wagon right here, when, when did this weirdo come into place? What's his name? Dozer Lope? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when did he come in the place, you say? Yeah. What was, what was his whole get down in this whole thing? Oh, he was just, he was pulling them back. He was calming them down. He was holding his friend back. He was like, oh, come on, let's go, let's go. And he was actually telling us after, he was telling us he didn't know the guy after, um, he kept walking, trying to um, keep arguing. He, he told us, I'm sorry, I don't know this guy. I just met this dude. He just met that dude? Yeah. Because uh, he was trying to, like, sell his IG on there. Did he try to reach out to you at all during all this? No, he didn't. All right. So that's how it started. It didn't. It didn't have. It didn't have to do nothing to do with maybe him stealing your pants. Those pants that he was wearing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I just. I can't take my my. I can't. It, it's like a deer in the headlights type of thing. I can't take my eyes off those pants. Yeah, maybe he was talking us. Who knows? In the parking lot, you know, because it was just weird. Maybe he was waiting for somebody to start. He was probably watching people. He was like, "Who should I start something with?" Well, yeah, he's been steadily posting videos on YouTube lately talking about catching a fade with anybody and everybody that wants to come down to Huntington Beach and fight him. Yeah, actually, um, somebody uh, um, told us as well that um, he walked up to them before all this incident went down. He actually walked up to some people and they were just fishing and he asked them, what are you doing? And um, the people said, we're just fishing. And then what, what did he say to him? Like, so why don't you drop the fishing poles and let's catch his fade or, or how did, how did that play out? Um, can you repeat that? Sorry. What, ha what happened next when, when the, when the people that were trying to fish, and I got to tell you, my hats are off to anybody that wants to fish off the Huntington Beach Pier these days because they're probably not going to catch any fish. They might even catch a dead body, you know. But that's besides the point. Um, the fishing poles. So when he went up and asked, well, what are you guys doing? And they told him, well, we're fishing. Obviously, what's your fucking first clue, dumbass? I mean, if I'm holding the fishing pole and somebody comes up and asks me, what are you doing? I'm going to be like, huh, I'm singing and dancing. What does it fucking look like I'm doing? I'm fishing, clown. Yeah. What did you say after that, like, drop the fishing poles and let's catch his fade or let's fight or did did, did he start going into his whole after his, his after, whole brain manis routine after that? After that, he actually um, walked up to us because he saw us and he walked towards us. And that was that's that's when first contact struck. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about his fighting skills, okay? Um, so your brother and his friends, they're how old? My brother and his friends, my brother is 21, and my other brother is 24, and his friend, I'm not sure. I know he's around the 20s. He's 23, I believe. Is it true that your brother and his, your brother's friends are 
the shot callers for the biggest gang in Orange County. Is this true? No. No, that is not true. We don't, we've never even lived in Orange County. Is it true that your brother and your brother's friends are, are trained assassins for a larger criminal organization that controls California? And they were, no. they, were, they were in Huntington Beach looking to catch this fade with Mr. Steven Sagala, a.k.a. Uh, Seat Sniffer Studios? No, we were just, we went to the beach to go celebrate my birthday. And you guys said you were skating too before that, right? Was, was that skateboarding, rollerblading, you know? Skateboarding. Skateboarding? Yeah, yes. So, you, so your brother and his friends are like skateboarders, right? Yes, they are. All right. Um, not gang members, skateboarders. And Huntington Beach is looking to have a good time. And then out of nowhere, here comes Savage sniffing around, right? Yes. And when all that took place, I got to ask, like, what did, what did you think about his fighting skills? He just, he was just holding, he's a clown. He's just pulling shirts, you know, getting held back by his friends as well. Hold me back, hold me back, that kind of thing? Yes, yes. His friends were actually tell, um, holding him back and were trying to tell him, let's go, let's go. Okay, but let's talk about his fighting techniques because obviously when he was going up against your brothers, he, he realized that he was – he was, he was faced with some uncertain odds because your brothers are like gladiators and, and hardcore killer. Are your brothers like, is it true that they're, that they're trained in, in several different degrees of martial arts? Like let's say Taekwondo, Savat, MMA, all that no. stuff. Fighters, professional fighters, your brothers, right? No. So your brothers don't like get out there and, go to the beach to try to catch a fade with anybody they see people with fishing poles, you know, maybe a couple smooching under the moonlight, watching the waves flicker and glow. No. No? no, yes. No, we're not those type of people. No, we just like nice vibes, you know, having a good time. So what was, what was, uh, what was your first thought when you knew that you were in the presence of a hardcore, uh, two, five killer, with his whole, okay, I'm going to try to demonstrate a little bit about his <laughs> fighting skills. Yeah. Like, like, did that instill a great deal of fear into the hearts of you guys? No. Yeah. I got to tell, just... tell you, I probably would have gotten beat up because I would have been laughing so hard that I, I wouldn't even know how to, like, compose myself in the face of that. Yeah, he was just running around, up and down, back and forth. He was backing up, you know. I got to tell you, the first time I seen this video, right, it was, it was presented to me by a fellow associate of mine. And I kind of, I was at work, I was on my break, and I was just breezing through it. I'm just like, oh, what's going on? And, it, and I thought maybe there was like a clip from Stomp the Yard. Have you ever seen the movie Stomp the Yard? <laughs> yes, I have. Yes. I didn't know if you guys were dancing. I didn't know you were playing Twister. I didn't know what was going on. Because <laughs> then the next thing you know, I see another clip where the 2-5 assassin, Mr. Uh, Seat Sniffer, he, uh, he was winding up and trying to hit, I don't know who that guy was, but he was totally missing a target that was literally inches away from him. Yes, a 21-year-old and is probably 80 pounds way less than him. Yeah. I'm surprised, you know, as badass as, as he Savage seems... says he is, you guys should have all been straight airlifted out of there. You know what I mean? Right. And not just that, since he says he's so badass, and he probably should have rocked them all, right? Yeah, it should have been a one-punch knockout. Yeah. You know, like I said, this guy's a tough guy. He's a real badass, you know, just singling out random people and, and ruining, ruining their lives. You know, not that your lives are going to be ruined from this, but the one thing is, is you'll always have that. It, it won't affect your life, but nonetheless, it's a stain 
It's something that, that you don't deserve to have. It's something that I believe that you should work wholeheartedly to try to get removed because all of us on YouTube know that this guy has been looking for a fight for months, months, months and months. He's challenged me to a fight. He challenged my boy Neil Azad to a fight. He's challenged uh, uh, this other cat. They call him outside the box. Challenge him to a fight. There's, a, there's another channel that's way out there in Florida. His name is K-Frog. He challenged K-Frog to a fight. He challenged my boy Dog Pound to a fight. He challenged my boy Lance to a fight. Um, now he's challenged you guys to a fight, and you didn't even deserve that. Right. So – once this was all said and done, let's talk a little bit about the aftermath. Okay, so after everything went down, after, after the cops all, got called. All yes. said and done, the, the Huntington Beach's finest is on the scene. What's the, next, what's the next course of events that's happening at that point? So then the cops get involved and um, he starts pointing out people and then um, he's not even handcuffed. He's just sitting down, talking to the cops, just pointing fingers, saying they did this, this, and that, who, and just saying stuff. So then next thing you know, the cops come and arrest my brother. And then um, I was telling them what's wrong. He didn't do anything. And so then um, I was just watching them arrest my brother. Then the cops arrest me. And he's still there pointing fingers. And then suddenly we're all arrested. And we, um, the cops were asking us um, what, what, what happened. And they didn't, we told them what happened and they didn't believe our story. And out of nowhere, we seen that he walks, walks away. He, um, he's free. He's nothing, nothing um, no charges, nothing against them. You know, there's they a just little... Confess- Right to jail. Took you right to jail. You know, there's a little bit of speculation amongst us that believe that uh, Seat Sniffer is actually, he's actually maybe an informant. He actually works for law enforcement. So at any time, did you see any maybe like a secret wink or maybe a secret handshake or some kind of a code word, like maybe shoot the moon, something like that to let him know, hey, I'm one of you guys. Uh, Let me off the hook here. Yeah, he was with the enforcement um, um, talking talking to him, and they actually even separated us. So I don't know, it seemed kind of strange for them not to arrest him, but arrest us. I mean, for anything, for public intoxication, right? Right. Personally, I think he should have been arrested for wearing those pants. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those pants got to be illegal. And we're talking. Los My pants. God. You know what I mean? It's just like, ugh. Anyways. Okay. Yeah, so, he was, huh? He was just whisker, whispering to the cops in those pants, you know? <laughs> maybe it was those pants that got him out of this whole thing. Think maybe. about it, you know? Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe the cop, you know, went around back with him, you know, and he uh, smashed his beans a little bit. I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but, you know. Inserted, yeah. inserted something into his backside, maybe, you know? Yeah, maybe. He probably liked it, and he, you know? So do you think maybe afterwards that after the cop had taken him into a private stall, that maybe there might have been a little brown spot on the back of those pants, maybe? Probably- yeah. I'm sorry. As I told you, I'm very forward and direct. I'm very – got no filter. All right, <laughs> um – Okay, so the pants. He didn't get arrested for indecent exposure for wearing those pants. Um, like I told you, you know, you found out later that he was Savage Studios, the Walmart stalker. I'm sure you've heard all about his escapades right. in the, the Joshua Tree area. I don't know. Where, where are you guys? What, what county are you guys out of? I stay in Riverside, San Bernardino. All right, so I'm sure you've heard about the city of Joshua Tree. Yes. Okay, so this guy's on probation in San Bernardino, by the way, just so you know. Okay. Um, he's on probation for stalking, and he got a charge of soliciting a lewd act in public. 
Wow. So basically, he went up to some woman or some man. I mean, <laughs> considering the fact that those pants that he was wearing, as I can't just seem to take my mind off of, it could be quite possible that we don't know the, the gender of whoever it was he was stalking in the Walmart. Um, but nonetheless, he did get charged with stalking, as you've seen in the paperwork. And he also got charged with soliciting a lewd act. Now, I don't know if you know what that means, but soliciting a lewd act means that somebody will approach you and ask you, say, baby, you know, you want to you wanna wrap your lips around this or you want to go outside and, you know, do this or this or that. Or it could even be, bitch, did you spit? You know, well, meaning that, like, yeah. sometimes in sexual language, it's do you spit or do you swallow? He might have been so drunk he wanted to say, "Did you do you spit or do you swallow?" But yeah. he was only able to articulate "spit" because you know he's not he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. So yeah, and it's so sick how people actually even believe or defend this dude. Like, imagine it was just one of your siblings, how you said, or family members going through this. Like. It's just, he's a weirdo, just came up to me, like, who does that? You got to have mental issues to even do something like that, honestly. Well, I have to tell you this, right? So, for all these people that are out there supporting the seats and effort to this very day, just know that, that you are backing up a stalking, woman-abusing, sexual deviant, and in my eyes, anybody that continues to support this guy, basically what you are is you may not officially be on Megan's Law, but you're definitely in the reserve list of Megan's Law. You are an undrafted free agent in Megan's Law, and you're probably just a, a, a seat sniffing or a lewd act or soliciting a minor away from being on that list with your buddy. Um, like I said, this dude is friends with another YouTuber who's a confessed chomo. His name is Fat and Saucy, or as I like to call him, Fat and Nasty or Fat and Sloppy. Um, this guy thinks it's funny to go, into, go out down there to TJ to Tijuana and have sex with 14 and 15-year-old girls, you know? This is one of Savage's friends. So just so you know the kind of guy that approached you. Wow, that's disgusting. Yeah, and isn't he also a child abuser? Speculation says that that's quite possible, but I'm not willing to go on complete record and say that's true because the document itself says Michael Sagala. His name is Stephen Michael Sagala, so I don't know if that's true or not. But then again, with everything that keeps coming out, nothing, nothing surprises me, nothing shocks me. Yeah. You also told me that uh, Brittany his ex-wife had reached out to you, right? Right. Did, did you feel like maybe that she was fishing to see what, what you were going to do? Yeah, I think so. Because after I told her what happened, she just didn't respond. So it was weird. Yeah, see, I try to tell the people that are around me to they should just disassociate themselves with her because that woman is a professional victim, you know? Yeah. And there was even one point, there was even one point where she was asking for money saying that I can't feed my kid because I got to send this dude, Steven money. Wow. When he was That's in jail, sad. when he was in jail for the seat sniffing charges. Um, so yeah, just, just steer all the way clear from her, uh, steer clear from any, any of these people that are coming out of the woodworks talking about, asking you weird questions, random questions about any of this stuff. If somebody wants to come out to you, Leslie, and say, we support you, we're with you, fuck that dude, and what can we do to help? That's all you should be. Anything else people are like, so, you know, they want to start questioning you. What they're going to be trying to do is they're going to be trying to twist your words around. Don't listen to any of them. Yeah. Because what we've established here is that you and your brothers, your girlfriend, all of you, were the victims of a guy 
who has been looking for trouble for a long time. Correct. And he came to a family this time. Like, that's so sick of him. Like, last time it was two girls, right? Or a girl, I don't know. And this time it was a family. Like, how sicker can this guy get? You know, and you could have been, you could have been severely hurt. How tall are you? I'm 5'2". Five 5'2". Two. Five two. And I weigh 96 pounds. 96 pounds. 5'2", 96 pounds, and big old bad tough guy, 2'5". PC prison gang, by the way, hits you. Yeah. And it sucks, be it sucks because after I've been having, he hit me right here, so it hurts so bad here. And I wake up every day with constant bad headaches. And I just have really bad anxiety now after all this incident. And I just can't really sleep well as well anymore. Yeah, you, you look, you look kind of tired right now. Hopefully you can get some rest after we're done here. I won't keep you for too much longer. Um, have you gone to the doctor or anything? Because you could have like a mild concussion or something. Yeah, I think I'm going to go check it out because I still have the bump here and it's hurting. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go get checked out. Did he hit you hard enough to where you felt like you lost consciousness? Yes. Was that you that was on the ground? Um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't me. Because I, when, when the video started, somebody was on the ground. Yeah, that was my sister-in-law. He had, I don't, my, um, he had accident, like, he, he went, um, he was running, I'm guessing, and he, like, tripped her, or I don't know what happened, but we were trying to, like, pull, just pull our friend away, so nothing else happens, and he actually, he, like, socks them, and, um, that's when, like, she trips, and he socks me as well. Is was he what is he is he like taller because there's all all kind of speculation on how tall he is. Was he like way taller than your brothers? Yes. He was. So how are your brothers doing in all this? They're okay. Um well all of us we're pretty you know, we're we don't feel comfortable anymore because now we have something something to worry about about this incident that we didn't even cause anything and this guy wanted content for his youtube and all this just for what you know we're some we were just people trying to have fun honestly and it's sad how we are victims of this and how can people say that we want like we're trying to fight him or something when all we were trying to do is just celebrate my birthday weekend yeah Happy fucking birthday, huh? Yeah. He honestly ruined my freaking birthday weekend. How old did you turn? 19. I just turned 19. 19 years old. Jeez. You actually could be my daughter. Damn, you can almost be my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 46, but yeah. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been 19, but yeah. Um... Is there any, is there anything that like we can do to help you? Like, is there any, any form, is there like a legal fund set up? Yes. I actually set up a GoFundMe for lawyers. If you guys could please donate, it would be, it will be on my Instagram. It'll be on my link. I I'll share it on, I'll share it in this video. Thank you so much. Yeah, I took it off because he he even was saying that we we were wanted um clout, and after we knew who he was, we wanted to get paid and stuff. And I didn't want people to think that we wanted to do that because we're not. No, we, no, we no, 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 no. Look, Leslie, you guys does you guys need to be paid? You should be suing this guy because I'm telling you right now, you're you're gonna be get. Did you guys even get a lawyer yet? No, we haven't. Well, they'll probably give you a uh, county-appointed public defender. Don't really put a lot of faith in that guy or girl, whoever it is. But um, you're gonna you're gonna be given a lot of ammunition. Trust and believe that because this is bullshit. You know, I feel kind of responsible. Is the reason why, one of the biggest reasons why I brought you on here. 
I feel responsible because I'm one of the people that set him off. Whether he wants to admit it or not, he tried to go in on me, and I just, I just shut his whole world down. And he's been on a downward spiral ever since. He was on a downward spiral before that, but not – I mean, the shit that I put him through was the nail in his coffin. So now everybody that is in this dude's way – I feel kind of responsible for it. You understand what I'm saying? So I apologize on my end. It's okay. You know, because never in a million years did I think that he would put some innocent family of people trying to celebrate your birthday in harm's way because he wants to catch a fade with everybody. And the one thing that I'm going to part on, talking directly to you, all of you watchers out there, that are watching this, viewers. How many times have some of you trolls told me, you're too scared to fight this guy. You're a pussy. Go down there and catch that fade. I'm convinced now that every single one of you that said that, you're either a child molester, a rat, a cop, or an informant. Because it's like I said from the jump, and I've had so many people telling me, Oh, no, that's not how it works. Oh, no, 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 no. That you could just fight somebody in the streets and just go home when it's done. We have living proof right here that it doesn't work that way. I'm going to tell you how it works. This is how it works. Nine out of ten times, you'll get into a fight. Somebody will call you out on a fade especially in California where they frown down on violence. Somebody will call you out and challenge you to a fight. You will show up to this fight. You'll fight. The cops will get called. And then they're going to approach you and ask you, do you want to press charges? Now, naturally, you're going to say no because you accepted the fight. Then they're going to go to the guy that challenged you to the fight, and they're going to ask him if he wants to press charges. And guess what he's going to say? You're damn right, officer. I want to press charges. And that's exactly what Savage did. And that's exactly what he was trying to do to me. That's exactly what he was trying to do to Neil Dazad. That's exactly what he was trying to do to Outside the Box, K-Frog, and everybody else he challenged to a fight. So if you had any doubts about anybody's heart, Gora, anybody's balls, I think you're pretty educated now on how this whole thing works. I'm glad that I was able to bring this to you so that you could see what kind of a clown this fool is. Typical PC, S&Y, prison gang, 2-5, pussy. The kind of person that yells through the bars, tries to antagonize you, and if you take a shot at him, you do anything to him, he's running to the COs. For any of you that continue to support this guy, don't come around me. If I see any of you on my channel, and I see you on his channel, I'm just going to get rid of you. Because I've had enough of this fool. We've all had enough of this fool. And now you're looking at a young lady who now has an arrest record. An arrest record. And she's not even 21 yet. She's not in the gang life. She's not a drug addict. She's not a criminal. Any of that shit. And this loser attempted to ruin her and her family's lives. You should all feel so proud of yourselves if you continue to support this clown. The only thing I'm going to say to all of you, fuck you. That's basically what I'm going to say. If there's anything at all that I could do for you, Leslie, I will do it. I'll find your GoFundMe. I'll see what I can do as far as cash is concerned. When is your, um, how far out is your court date? Don't give me the day. Just how far out is it? It's, it's, um, it's going to be um, like in one, a month. Okay. So we got a little time. I'll see what I could do on my end as far as like getting some funds together. I usually run some lives on Friday nights. Maybe not this Friday, but coming a couple Fridays down the road, we can mention you. You guys can join, me, join us in the live. We could talk about all this. But um, I'm just sorry that all this had to happen to you. 
Thank you. It's not your fault. And I appreciate all this. Thank you for letting me come in your channel and giving me the opportunity to explain myself and actually um, taking time out of your time to get my side of the story, not like these other people that just love to criticize. Well, you see, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rare breed. I don't take sides. I see, you know, a lot of people know me. I don't, I don't take anybody's side. I'm completely in the middle of everything. Um, I give people the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I try to be objective and I try to look at people's past prison experiences as being in the past, who you are now is what I look at. <clears throat> Unless of course you're a rapist, a child molester, a seat sniffer, cannibal, necrophiliac, some kind of weirdo like that. I don't want nothing to do with you, but people, you know, whatever it was in Savage Studios case, I gave him the benefit of the doubt because I know a lot of people, I've been in the California prison system and I know a lot of people have gone out backwards over drug debts or whatever. And they've, they've gone to S and Y and they get out of prison and I'm just like, well, I mean, are you a two fiver Northern Rider? Are you a PC prison gang member? No, no, none of that. I just, I fucked up. So usually I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Eventually uh, at one point I did that for him and then come to find out that he was a two fiver. He lied and told me he wasn't. Um, you know, I feel stupid over that, but it is what it is, a learning experience. But this thing right here, it's my goal to make sure that these charges get dismissed, get dropped, and that the, the true party, the person that antagonized and started all this and instigated it should be the one that held answer for it. And I think you guys should sue him personally. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think you should sue him. No, Yeah. So any, any, uh, any parting words, anything at all? Any parting words you said? Yeah. Any parting words? We're going to go ahead and kill. Oh this right yeah. Here. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. I, like I said, and thank you for listening to my side of the story. I appreciate it and have a great day, everyone. Oh, and before we go, just let me, let me tell you this. In the comments section, pay no attention to the Wessy Sissies, to the Sassy Savvies, or any of these other weirdo chomo seat sniffers that might be in the comments section, all right? Okay. You know what a Wessy Sissy is? No, I don't. There's another YouTube channel, a pinhead guy that takes too many steroids, and he has a whole group of fan, fanboy, soy boy, low testosterone men that circle around him that like to come into the comments and talk shit. Oh, wow. And Savage has his own little family of, of girls, or I mean boys, I'm sorry. And we call them the sassy savvies. Because okay. They're, because they're, they're very faffy with what <laughs> you say in the comments. Okay? Just be prepared. Okay. I'll it's try. okay. They, won't, they don't hurt my feelings. They're just, just a, a trolls hiding under the screens. Laugh at them. They've, <laughs> yeah. They've tried everything to enlarge their penises outside of using a magnifying glass, and they just can't seem to make it work. But that's what it is. All right, we have a, we have a special tradition of closing out Prison Break Raw. I'm sure you already know I got no filter. Looks like you're pretty level-headed with all of that. But we basically close this out in dramatic fashion. Are you ready for it? Yes. Prison Break Raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, non sugar code, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that. What are we slapping them with? With a... With a dick of reality, we're slapping them with that fat dick of reality. <laughs> fat dick of reality. <laughs>